please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all. Because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos. So make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to all my brothers and sisters in Christ and to all of our lost brothers and sisters in Islam and to anybody else that is listening. Welcome to the Truth Verses. Let us begin in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for this day that you have made. Father, we pray that you touch our lives and the lives of the Muslims throughout the world, that you show them the truth, that you bring them to your Son, Jesus, that died on the cross to pay for all of our sins. Lord Father, bless this channel that it does your work that it brings people to your glory, to your Son. We ask this in your Son's most holy name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, I am still looking for the hadith where Aisha narrated that Muhammad boasted that he was with all nine or eleven of his wives in one night, but it was only a dream. Still looking for it, but once again, I found another stupid hadith. This is now number five. Number four was probably the dumbest one yet. This one is not really that dumb. See, on a scale of one to ten, number four was probably 200. It was off the charts. This one is probably around a two or a three, but there's a different problem. Muslims, you are in trouble. And true, I am probably reading a little bit into this one. <laughs> but you are in trouble, oh boy. And yes, I am admitting that I am reading a little bit into this one because there is not that much information. So, we are going to try to explore a little bit more. Okay. So
so. Ja, so. Mhm. Here it is. The messenger said, Allah and his angels send blessings upon the right side of the rose. Hmm. What rose? Now, I'm going to guess before we look deep into this that when you go to the local mosque, there is a right side and a left side. Guess what I'm thinking? In the mosque. Mm -hmm. He sends blessings on the right side. Of course he would send blessings on the right side. Why would he do that? Anybody want to venture a guess? Anybody? Anybody want to venture a guess why Allah says the right side? Right away, without even thinking about it, my mind goes to dun dun dun. God's messenger as saying, God created Adam when he created him and struck his right shoulder and brought forth his offspring white like small ants. And he struck his left shoulder, whose left shoulder? Adam's left shoulder, and brought forth his offspring black as though they were charcoal. Then he said, to the party on his right side, to paradise, and I do not care. And he said to the party in his left shoulder, to hell, and I do not care. That one is Isnad, but there is Hassan, Okay, so this okay, well. You can complain that it's not Sahih, but the thing is, it is still in your reference books that you hold dear. Okay, so much so. that your sheikhs and imams and all of your other uppers has bookshelves full, even bigger than this. Of even more hadiths. And this is only just a small sample. That's just a small sample. Okay, you can complain all you want about it not being Sahih, but the truth is it is still in your Hadith books.
that is the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the right side of the rose after I dissected it. What can it mean, right side of the rose? Oh. When they go to the local mosques, every mosque has a right side and a left side. You cannot. I don't care what mosque it is has a right side and a left side. Every mosque. So, if you've been sitting on the wrong side of the mosque, guess what? You have not been getting blessings. Oh, you haven't been told about this. Well, I wonder why. Wow. Now, I said we are going to take a, we are going to try, okay, to take a closer look to see what this means. And we are going to do it live. This is what is meant by keeping it in, keeping it in context this is what is meant when i say i try to keep things in context now this is okay and i am not going to lose my place here because i'm still looking for what i'm looking for sunan im and maja the 1005, since I've got the copy here, I will go over here. Sunan Iman Maja. Okay, here it is. You are going to watch me live. It's going to be right here. Establish, establishing prayer and the Sunnah regarding them. Aha. Uh -huh. So you haven't been reading. I am not going to read every single one of them. Okay, come on, catch up. And I don't mean Heinz. Okay, that's 824, 1005 should be right about here. Catch up. Okay. Nope. Still 890 something. Let's try here. One. Oh, went too far. 1030. Getting closer. So here's 1005. Here it is. So let's see if 1006 and 7 and 4 and 3 gives, uh, gives us any clues. When we perform prayer behind the messenger of, of Allah, um, I cannot say that name, said one of the things we liked or of the things I liked was to stand to his right. It was said to the prophet, the left side of the mosque has been a Abandoned. See, you are watching it live. I did not pre look this up. And just out of a guess, I said mosque. And we are seeing a clue right here the left side of the mosque has been abandoned. The prophet said, whoever frequents the left side of the mosque to Kifu or to Kifi, 
of reward will be recorded for him. Okay, let's go even maybe one or two further. When the messenger of Allah finished Tawaf around the house, he came to Makam of Ibrahim. Umar said, O messenger of Allah, this is the station of our father Ibrahim about which Allah said, and take you the Makam of Ibrahim as a place of prayer. Okay, that says nothing about why do you not take the Makam of Ibrahim as a place of prayer? Then the following was revealed and take you the pe the Makam of Ibrahim as a okay that okay we are now getting way out. Okay, there's two thousand five. Now let's go the other direction. Now see, this is what we do when we try to keep things in context. Read a few verses after and a few verses before. Muslims don't do that when they rip verses out of context of the Bible. And even then, they, do, they oftentimes do not quote the whole verse. They only quote a partial of the verse. This is keeping things in context. Zayed bin Abu Jad took me by the hand and made me stand near an old man at Raqqa, who's, and I hope I have just said that right. If not, I am absolutely sorry. Whose name was Wabisa bin Mabad. And I hope I am saying all these names right. I really am. He said a man performed prayer behind the row on his own, and the prophet commanded him to repeat the prayer. Okay, that's not saying much of anything when it comes to what we are looking for. It is saying something, but it's not relevant to what we are looking for. We set out until we came to the prophet. We gave him our oath of allegiance and performed prayer behind him. Then we offered another prayer behind him. He finished the prayer and saw a man on his own prayer behind, behind the row. He said the prophet of Allah stood beside him. And when he finished and said, repeat your prayer, there is no prayer for the one who is behind the row. Okay, we were forbidden to form a row between two pillars at the time of the messenger of Allah, and we would be repelled from them forcefully. Uh, is, it is talking about rows, but... The best rows for men are the front rows, and the worst rows are back rows. And the best rows for women are the back rows, and the worst are the front rows. Okay. Now we are talking front and back rows. Wow. Front and back and left and right. And this is because women have half a brain. And again, I am presuming it's talking about in the mosque. And when you take a look 
inside the mosque where are the women? In the back or that there is a special balcony upstairs in the back for the women. And what is this whole book about, or chapter, whatever you want to call it? It is establishing the prayer and the sunnah regarding them. And where do you often do prayer? in the mosque. So, going back to 1005, Allah and his angels send blessings upon the right side of the rose. So, Mr. and Miss Muslims, <laughs> if you've been sitting on the left, Guess what? And according to O seven, it's the mosque because we try to keep things in context. This is what we do, and I, and this is one of the few times I try to show you live. Well, I don't know about live, but that I show you how I keep things in context. And yes, I am speaking the truth that I did not pre-look this up before I started recording. But it was obvious that it was likely talking about the mosque. Mr. and Miss Muslim. You have to know every single detail about Islam in order to be a Muslim. Not so with Christianity. You can start, and you can grow, and that is the beautiful thing about Christianity. You can start, and you can grow, and you can learn, and you can keep on growing and learning. There is so much to learn. A couple of my instructors in my Masters of Theology have said they can study the Bible their whole life and keep on learning new things. And that's the thing about the Bible. 
you can continue to learn new things. How many blessings have you missed because you've sat on the wrong side? Instead, come to Christianity where there is no ridiculous rule like this. Jesus is waiting to, for you to be a part of his family. He really is waiting.
listen, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Do not think that we hate you because we do this. If we really hated you, we would not be doing this at all. We would be off doing something else and we would just let you burn in the lake of fire. Okay, simple as that, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Simple as that. Instead, not only does Matthew 28, 16 through 20 calls us to go out into all the world, but as a Christian, it pulls at our heart. that many will still die and go to the lake of fire. Just like there are only two sides to the coin, heads and tails, there are only two places you can go, heaven or the lake of fire. In your religion, it is called paradise and hell. Okay. Just like in Islam, there are certain things you do need to do. But in Christianity, you have to recognize the key element that Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the only begotten Son, John 3.16, have came to earth, took possession of a human body, grew up among us as a human, went to the cross for our sins, took the penalty of our sins, and ended the old covenant. See, there are two things he did at the cross. Most Christians does not realize there were two things he did at the cross. He bore our sins which and took the penalty for our sins and he ended the covenant. Or, yeah, he have ended the covenant, the old, what well, what is now known as the Old Covenant, which is why it is now called the Old Testament. Okay. And brought in a new covenant, which is why it's now called the New Testament. Oh, excuse me, the New Testament. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And that by accepting this, you become an adopted child of the father Theos. Okay, by accepting all this, you become an adopted child of the father, 
theos. See, in Islam, you are only an Abdul, which means slave. In Christianity, you become an adopted child of the Most High. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? To go from being an Abdul to being a brother and sister to the most powerful king in the universe. Let me actually rephrase that to being the child of the most powerful king of the universe, to being the brother and sister of the most powerful prince, which is Jesus Christ of the universe. See, if we hated you, again, we would just let you be and just let you burn in hell. We would just let you burn in the lake of fire. Who cares? Well, I for one care. I for one care and others like me that does videos like this care. You may think that we are making fun just for making fun of your religion. And yeah, I'm sure a couple are, but most of us are trying to get you to wake up out of the coma that you are in, out of the brainwashing that you have endured. We are trying to get you to wake up. You might be saying, well, I was brainwashed too. No, I was not. Not by Christianity. You are brainwashed and you are in a cult. Let me ask you this, Mr. and Ms. Muslim, because here is a sure sign of a cult. If you leave Islam today, what would happen to you? A death threat would be put on to your head. And if you are in an Islamic country, and if they find out, it would be carried out. That is a cult. Or you would be shunned in a non-Islamic controlled country. Just ask the apostate, the, just ask the apostate prophet. He is no longer a Muslim, and he has been receiving death threats ever since he has left. Ask a lot of these other Muslims or ex-Muslims that has left Islam. They have continued to receive death threats. There are ex-Muslims in Muslim-controlled countries 
right now that has to keep it a secret because of that death threat. That's only one sign of being in a cult. It is time to get out. Even if you cannot openly declare it, quietly get out. And then declare your heart to the Lord Jesus. I truly believe that he understands that you cannot openly declare right now. But do something about your false religion and come to the Lord Jesus. He's waiting for you. Come now before it is too late. Okay. What must I do to be saved? God the Father, Theos, did his part. He sent his only begotten Son, at which, let me point out, that the Son did so of his own free will, okay, that, that of Theos sent his only begotten Son, John 3, 16, to one, bring an end to the Old Covenant, which is why the Old Testament is called the Old Testament. Testament and covenant are actually synonyms and thus brought in a new covenant because in the Old Testament, in order to to cover sins, they had to sacrifice lambs. Oops, where have we heard that term in the New Testament? Oh yeah, John, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Okay. So, therefore, Jesus, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, sheds his holy blood to atone for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. Okay, so now, and then, and, and then the Holy Spirit is sent afterwards, but what do we do before we can believe anything we have got to hear? And here is but just a couple of mini verses in the Bible that says we need to hear the gospel. And then we need to believe it. We need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came to pay the penalty for our sins and that we are to accept it. Now, 
I think I consider him as, well, I actually consider him as a friend, and I hope that he considers me as a friend too, which is why when he did a video on things like this steps to salvation type memes. He did not give my name on that video, but I think he was in a way point me out as well as others. But here is the thing. Every single point on this has scripture to back it up. Now, absolutely, you have to hear. Absolutely, you have to believe because one of the verses is, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. At, at the congregation that he preaches, he boasts that he have baptized, oh, excuse me, he boasts that he have baptized over 200 people. So I know that he still believes in the baptism as well. So, hear, believe, and baptized. Now, there is arguments of when do we repent and confess. Now, whether if you want to have this red line here, that's on you. If you want to have the red line here, this is what has been believed for a very long time. Now, repent of sins, I personally, my personal opinion, at which it does, does not count, can be put after baptism because we still sin even though we've been baptized because what is in the Our Father's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Repent of sins. Okay. You are actually being baptized for the forgiveness of sins. So why have this be before this? So, yeah, this can go after because we still sin after we are baptized. So, yeah, the repent of sin personal opinion should be after baptism. And remain faithful. We do those things, and I think I did a video on that. If not, I will do one. But we do those things because we are saved, not to be saved. There is a big difference. If you read Ephesians 2 verse 10, see, a lot of people want to quote Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. We are saved by faith through, through grace alone. Woohoo! and want to stop at verse 9 as if there's a brick wall between verse 9 and 10. No, you got to go on. Verse 10 
then goes on to explain, then we are called to do good works. Even though our good works according to the Father is like filthy rags, he still calls us to do them. What did I just say? Yes, even though our good works are like filthy rags, he still calls us to do them. Okay, so, therefore, regardless where you want to put this line, whether here or over here, regardless, every single one of these have scriptural reference, period. One of them being believe and is baptized, not or be baptized. And means you've got to do them both. This, this same preacher believes we cannot lose our salvation. Well, unfortunately, I've got some bad news for you. Yes, we can. Read Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Okay, but here are the steps of salvation. One of the things we are called to do to remain faithful is to congregate to worship together. Uh, another one is to be a cheerful giver. When I do the video on it, at which today's date is June 25th, 2022. So look back in late June of 2022 for this video or maybe even earlier for the explanation of what it means to remain faithful. As a matter of fact, hold on, I will look to see if I have done one. Okay. It looks like, yes, I did. Are we saved by works, part one and part two? I was seeing that it was taking so long. And I was not even halfway through. So I did a part one and part two. Here is the thing, whenever we preachers talk about 
the importance of us Christians doing good works. Some of you want to say why that is legalism. It isn't legalism if it is in the Bible. So then don't even go there. If it's in the Bible, that is what Theos calls us to do. Watch those two videos before you say anything, because I will likely delete your comment. But this is what it means to be saved. So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems about Islam. And I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all. Instead, why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Al-Fadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad. The only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark 11:28 says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest and peace. Peace knowing, knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized and, and put your total faith in Jesus. Quran says, 354 and 830, that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers, as 354 and 830 tells us that he is, because Allah admits to it, how can you be assured He's not lying to you. 
and 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, have came to earth willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready to be a Christian? Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said, There are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you, and have a great day. And don't forget, in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box.